Hello viewers, I'm SB, and welcome to Children of the Sun, uh, which is a game about a person, uh, a woman whose life was destroyed by a cult, taking revenge on that cult with a big rifle. So that's sort of going to serve as your content warning. I don't have a lot more specifics than that. It's a very violent game, and there might be some pretty dark shit in there about, you know, her history with the cult. I honestly don't know. Um, it also features a pretty psychedelic visual style, so people with flashing light sensitivities and stuff beware. It's it's going to be weird. It's going to get a little bit wild here, and I want to jump right into it without really saying anything else about it so that we can all just sort of take this thing in together. So let's go hunting. You know, like that. It's going to be one of those days. Okay, that gives us some specifics. So at this point, the primary thing we know about this cult is that they all have to pee really badly. So here's the main gameplay twist of this thing. The bad news is, I believe we only have one bullet. The good news is, uh, well, you'll see in a second here, I guess. Okay, this does not work exactly the way I had expected it, that it would. I'm literally just, if I just move the mouse to the right and then don't do anything, this happens. Okay, when you have a clear shot, aim. Okay, mark them with a middle mouse click. And do the thing. Can I, okay, I have to get out of shoot mode. So if I was gonna do, but it's hard to get her to move a small amount. Okay, maybe like this. Oh, all of a sudden it's decided it wants gamepad controls here. Why would I use a gamepad in a game about shooting a gun precisely? All right. That seems like a winner to me. See, this is the thing. The virus is in their heads, and that's why we have to sort of let it out. So, um, it probably wasn't super clear from that because I did do it pretty straight. I'm trying to keep like a fairly straight mark here. Let's see, so we got one person here. There's definitely at least two more in the background. Ah, it's very difficult to move small amounts. Let me try going around this side of the building. There we go, we get our, we get our marks a little bit more easily here. You and you, and if I'm not mistaken from the cinematic, I think there's one more, yeah? All right, let's try something. So yeah, you can see we have a, a little bit more control over our projectile than you might in real life. Unless you're in that one, uh, that one James McAvoy movie. There you go, that works, that's something. Uh, so we get a deduction for time and level, a deduction for shots fired. I mean, that's, I feel it's like the minimum. Uh, and we're down here in the 2700 point part of the leaderboard. Listen, it's a Steam leaderboard. I bet it's pretty, I bet there's a lot of illegitimate stuff going on at the top of it, but it's fine. Okay, that's the idea of the game, right? So now, when it moves, it spreads. We just keep hunting because that's what we do. Is 
that guy arguing with somebody? Okay, we can get a couple of marks right here. Oops, that is the wrong button. It's fine, we're gonna improvise. Let's, uh... <clears throat> Listen, there are three buttons on my mouse. How does one ever hit one of them without hitting the others, I ask you. Yeah, there's a person right there. Let's scoot around this side a little bit more. Yeah, like setting the um, setting the point in the on this meter on the bottom of the screen to control exactly how quick the girl moves is a really as a really weird way to control this. But I guess like it's nice that she sort of like picked her perch. We don't have to worry too much about finding our footing. I mean, it looks like just the three of them, right? I'm pretty sure we have a limited amount of like turn capacity from target to target. So I want to time this carefully. This might work. Maybe. Alright. Where do you think you're going? Interesting. When it moves, it spreads. It's like an objective of some kind. Uh, no. Okay, we have considerable control over that, actually. And also, there was a guy I didn't see initially. <laughs> Perhaps not the most efficient pathing. But listen, we're not all Sir Waddles D. Waddlesworth over here, alright? Gas tanks make the world burn brighter. All right, I could take a hint. I feel like actually making the gas tank glow green is something beyond a hint. But then again, after that performance on the last level, perhaps they're figuring, you know, I could use a little bit of a push. So it looks like we got a couple of different groups here. At least five. Let's try to take up an angle over here somewhere, maybe? I'm fucking like 100% in love with the atmosphere of this thing. It is so grimy. Well, I suppose, you know, this is the, this is the car, right? If we're going to hit the gas tank, this is a pretty bad angle to try to do it from. Maybe I want to... Well, they're both at cars. Okay, they're, both of the scenes are occurring at cars. And since it does seem like we actually get a lot of a lot of turning control, honestly, maybe it's just like right here. Mm. Don't love my angle there. How about this? Yeah. Better. Let's find out. Okay, a couple of moving targets. Tough to, uh, tough to realize exactly how much rock was between the two scenarios there. Uh, yeah, that's a problem. I mean, when we fire this, it's just gonna... Okay. That's fine. It's a puzzle. We're just, we're just gonna figure it out. So detonating those two dudes gives us nothing to bounce off of, right? Which does suggest that maybe we want to take this side first. Okay, there's a car here, but in fact it does not have such an obvious gas tank. I'm wondering if, like, clipping through these guys what we need is just a way to see um, target number four, right? Unfortunately, it's really hard to guess like what the angle of the obstru obstructions is. So I think we're just gonna take the shot and try to make it work. All right, got 
have this guy run in that away, which is certainly helpful. There's another car over there. Can I bounce off of that? Just like an irrelevant vehicle that gives me another opening? I sure can. There you go, and that's a just barely viable. That one thought he was going to make it around the back side of that car. Okay, so there are elements of that that are a little messy. We do get a bonus if they're moving. Yeah, so like, it feels almost like a sort of like a modern Batman game in a sense. I mean, obviously not the shooting people with sniper rifles, but the fact that like, we're mechanically incentivized to scare them and then to deal with them while they're while they're um, reacting in panic, which is, I mean, it's grim. <laughs> it's some grim shit, but like I said, bullets that burn are bullets that hurt. Okay, somebody who's indoors is certainly going to be a problem. Moving evidence. So, one of these buildings is already on fire. I'm assuming the, the title of the level and the hint um, are supposed to give us this suggestion that we should shoot the bullet through the fire, right? Let's take a second here and just kind of like figure out our situation. So we do have some cars. We have at least one exposed gas tank. That person who's in the building, they're in, they're in, that building to the left there, right? Like, not the little one. Oh, maybe not. I don't see them through the window. Oh, wait. Okay, no, they're in the they're in the rightmost building. Actually, I think. Indeed. Well, that could potentially be a big problem. A lot depends on the angle from that person's position to the rest of these um, enemies, and I don't. We, I, we have no idea. Right, there's a big yellow six at the top right, which makes me think there are probably six enemies on the level. But I don't see anyone beyond these four. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe that's not what that means. All right, let's, um, let's try some stuff. Learn by doing. Oh, this isn't the guy I don't think that we saw because he's not doing the same task. Maybe there are multiple people inside this building. Let's find out. Uh, okay, all right. There we go through the fire. Spook him. Just give him a little, give him a little something to panic about. Make some noise while we're out here. You know, really, really let some people know what's up. And indeed, it's more people inside the building. And unfortunately, the one guy that we saw in the opening, I, I don't think is, is the one that we haven't killed yet. Um, I have nothing to shoot at. Uh, randomly through this door. No, okay. Well, it does not go through the door. Okay, no, he was, he is in that little building over there. We saw him during the zoom out. Okay. That's a tricky one. How are we going to get... Let me see if I can get a mark on that guy at least. All the way over at this side. Well, this does seem like a better approach, doesn't it? They let you really, you really get an angle on this one. A lot of freedom. think yeah, yeah yeah I think I can tag him from here 
Okay. Six. So. It does feel like it's going to be pretty hard. There's no way to get these two, the two in this closed building, from each other, right? We're going to have to zoom into the building, out to the fire, back into the building, and then back out to the fire area. And I probably want to save the car for that second, um, that second escape. That's my feeling. So let's start here. This gives us a lot of clarity to these guys. I guess you, you'll do. From here, we could just get this guy now. Let's actually make that happen. And then, he's like right in front of the gas tank. I don't know if the gas tank explosion will hit him. Let's find out. have to move a little faster than that, friend, and I think our angle should... Yeah. I wonder if there's a bonus for, you know, like, sort of carving a, a shape through the scene. I'm very desensitized by video games. None of, none of this stuff is affecting me at all. It's like, ooh, but could I get more points? It's like a commentary or something. Breakfast time. Sure. Yeah, the presentation here is... Really, really something. I guess we're hunting. This will be interesting. Um, traditionally, I think it's a bad idea to fire a gun into a body of water as far as, like, you know, maintaining your velocity and the intactness of your bullets and everything, but... I don't want to blow anybody's mind here, but like there may be some non-literality to some of the events that we are witnessing. It's just a possibility. Okay, there's a bird I haven't marked. That's what the that's what the seventh target is. Well, it seems like the birds are gonna be like a pretty easy way to link, right? So we wanna hit. I'm trying to make it as painless as possible for the fish. Let's say this. Birds move pretty fast. Yeah, I that was a little bit of a gimme in my opinion. I don't think I really hit that right. The game was kind to us on that one. Alright, never mind. I did not really need help linking the fish. They were Okay, you're flying like that. Yeah, leading the birds is important. So it's a, it's a, <laughs> I don't really know how much I want to talk about, like, sort of like interpreting the, um, the thing we're seeing here because it almost seems rude in a way, like, right? They've put this, um, hiding bodies, appealing views from the top. They've put all of this effort into the... into the extreme and non-literal things about the, um, the aesthetic and everything, and it's just like... Yeah, to sit here and pontificate about it feels shitty. Let's just, like, do the thing, right? Shoot towards the left trees. Okay. Oh, all right. 
so we can bend the bullet in flight as well. Appealing views from the top. So I'm assuming that part of the point of what we've gone through here is that we get, yeah, to teach us how to use the birds, use all of the, all of the living things in our surroundings. That said, I think we can see little bits of glow, but yeah, not enough to mark anything even. Obviously, it's like very difficult not to jump to the Mandy comparison. Um, just, you know, thinking of like recent media and stuff. Yeah, I guess we just pick a bird and go, huh? This is what I was worried about was that they would uh, suddenly turn in the air. But I guess we can do that too. And I'm going to have to because I did not leave that bird enough. That really did not get the guy's attention. I was expecting a little more reaction, you know? Let's see what's going on over here. Okay, we definitely flew past the guy, but in such a way that I can't. Where's that other bird? Okay. don't see the fourth person. Let's hit this and hopefully we can get a read from here. Actually, it doesn't look like it. It looks like I have allowed someone to live, which is just irresponsible as hell. Okay, I see him. There is, there is in fact, um, there is in fact quite a limited amount of turn available when the bullet's in flight. So he was like over here, I think. And maybe we'll just lead with that this time. Indeed. Well, I mean, I do love to blow up a gas tank, even if it doesn't necessarily get us what we want. Oh, he like crouches. How long am I allowed to sit here? He's digging currently. You know what? It's fine. We're going to do this and then snap back to him. Oh, no, he's just really tricky to get, actually. Okay. It's fine, it's fine. Just gonna take a quick hop to you. We should absolutely be able to clip him from above. Uh, provided I can find, where's that other bird? I did only shoot one of the birds, right? The hell? All right, I know approximately where he is. We're gonna try this. Weave it. There you go. The classic cork, corkscrew ballistics pattern. Now, the real trick is writing your name in their corpses. <laughs> in a way, don't we always? of them this time and we're looking at a couple of structures which could be tricky so that's a person just like standing on overwatch 
that is a headlight, not a head. So we know there's a couple of them inside the building. There's another one right next to this guy, so that's three. This looks like one where we're allowed to move all the way around the outside. Trying to keep an eye out near the active vehicles. Both because it just like it kind of seems like a natural place for someone to be, and also because, you know, I sure do like blowing up cult members. Can I mark the gas tanks? Oh, I can. Okay, so that I know where they they're easier to find later. Although, you know, the utility of that is somewhat limited, as we learned with the bird last time. Okay, that's not the other one that was praying. The way they're looking out and we're like walking directly into the area of their sightline makes me a little nervous. Like, I don't know for sure that we can't get caught. So one of the ones that we're missing is kneeled down next to number two. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's that one. It looks to me like that might be a person up there. Or is there a third? No, I think that's like a candle. Here's the problem with our like crazy psychedelia heat vision is that it does sometimes Blur reality a little. <laughs> yeah. I legitimately do not think I saw the eighth person. Although it's entirely possible that, you know, I ran past. Like, that's not a person, right? That light's not. Yeah, it's not similar to the way people glow. I love that we are, we are learning. We are learning to inhabit this character. All right. I kind of want to take the shot through the building first, I think. And I might, I might want something like this. Because if we just, if we just put it into this person, I mean, obviously it's nice to, um, it's nice to get the head where we can. But if we just put a shot into that person, we know there are people on the upper level of that house. Maybe we start with the upper floor guy. This is a headshot, right? Yeah. He'll be, he's looking down on the people praying, so. And we know there are enough openings on that side of the building. I'm gonna try it. Take a second here, see if we can't, aha. Uh -huh. Verify the location of our missing target. No, unfortunately, the only living people we got, we don't have headshots on, but that's fine, you know, is the price we pay. Ooh, explosives. Should have gone for the explosives. There's still time. A little worried we weren't gonna get that right. Ah, you know what? I think it seems like we get more bonus when we do more travel between um, targets. Like jumping from close one to close one isn't worth as much, but you know. Okay. So yeah, you definitely could get a better a better score on that one by bouncing in and out of the building repeatedly. And that might have been, honestly, it might have even been a smarter thing to do in terms of 
dealing with the people on the upper floor versus people on the lower floor, like hitting the guy, hitting this guy, bouncing it to here, and then jumping outside, I kind of actually want to try another one. It is not macabre to retry for score. That's what the game's about. And if you're having feelings about that, well, that's also what the game's about, and that makes it okay. Goodbye. Okay. Right, because if I can get out this window. Oh, that window's not open. And the thing that we all know about bullets is that glass, that's a big no-no. I was gonna just do that. I was gonna do our, our bullet turn in the air thing there. Okay, new plan, new plan. Starts the same way as the old plan. It's gonna look real familiar for a second. You can definitely go through glass as long as you're like on the way to hit somebody. It's if, if the bullet doesn't feel like you have its best interests in mind, that's when things get tricky. Okay. Oh wow, you survived that, that's crazy. Do you want to maybe, like, line up with that doorway a little bit? Just help me out here. That's fantastic. Thank you. All right, here we go. Here's the cool part. Shit. <laughs> turn again? I can't... There's only so much turning. Yeah, you can see, like, when I try to move it off of the uh, original trajectory of the bullet, the, um, that side of the halo around the reticle depletes. So yeah, there's really quite limited turning in the air. That was close though. That was like really close. We almost were able to hit that car. One more try, one more try. The birds are not marked anymore. Why are the birds not marked? The birds are not marked because they're innocent in all this. That's probably why. But on the other hand, we did come here to do a job. You know, that's all I'm saying. So that lights up all of the things. I wonder if it would be better to go outside now. I can probably, I can probably from here, yeah, turn enough to catch this guy. And then we can come back and get the runner afterward. And in fact, get better points if we do some distance work here. Ah, uh, shoot. I'm gonna try, like... Nope. <laughs> that guy was way too close to the hay. I was gonna try to loop it over, because I thought that would require less deviance from the, um... Like, setting the path correctly horizontally and bending the bullet downward seemed like it would be better than trying to fix the horizontal. But it turns out they're both a little troublesome. Both, both problematic in their own ways. Alright, what if we hit the lower explosives here? Because I've been hitting that one, but we can hit this one. Uh, it doesn't really change very much. Okay, I do like this. This is a better move for sure. Ah, uh, <clears throat> it's a better move if you don't start steering the bullet too early. After all this work, are we even going to produce a score that is better than the score that we got before? I, honestly, I have no idea. But I think it's important for us all to note that there is no task that you can give me that I will not try to optimize the numbers on. I'm just blowing stuff up for fun at this point. Interesting. You haven't reacted at all to what's going on. Yeah, if I don't, um, if I go downstairs by killing one of the living people first, we don't necessarily get, um, target number four to flee. Shoot. Uh, alright. This isn't gonna work. Uh, bird? Bird, help. Ten point bird bonus. 
There's a there's a gas tank on that car somewhere. There we go. All right, this will give us an angle into the church that I might be able to work with. Around the stuff. Ah, the person is still just they're just standing right there. Even though we did blow the stuff up after. Uh, getting the first couple of kills downstairs for some reason I guess it's like we didn't get the kill in a noisy way so even though we made a noise they didn't react it's interesting we're learning we're learning things about the functions here I think hitting the high explosive seems right it seems like the move alright go for this one steer after clearing this guy now makes sense and then what would be really good now is to get the bird and use the bird to drop on this one shit uh, try to find a spot where I can See, unfortunately, the bird, not being a cult member, does not reset the combo meter. So it's very easy to lose your combo scoring. That's definitely a better, a better score. We did that in a more horrifying way. And that's... You know, that's something. <laughs> the Gallery of Heads. I think it would be best for everybody if they did not make sense of what we're doing here. It's not going to help them any. Okay. Is that a person that kind of looks like a person? There's another watcher up there. Okay, the person's sitting down. We saw them in the cinematic. So this, this one guy likes to run up and down the stairs. So the the text underneath the title seems to be like a challenge that we can do on the level, and a two and one I think almost certainly refers to is it, going to be getting two people with an explosion, right? Because you can't really pick off two... Like, you can, you can absolutely pick up two people in one shot. That's kind of the whole thing. But it doesn't have the same meaning as it would in another game. So yeah, just getting getting two people with one gas tank would, I'm sure, be sufficient. Perhaps such a thing will be afforded to us. Do we have... It looks like there's no birds around here. I mean, that seems like an okay way to kick off the level. If we do that, I think we're going to get a lot of running, a lot of panic. So we want to watch the positions of like one and seven here. Because we want them to be in places where after we pick this up, we can snap back over here and use like, use like seven down here to ricochet up to one up at the top of the stairs. And that gets us inside, right? Maybe. That's what my plan is going to be in any case. And I think... Oh, one's coming down the stairs. It's not ideal. Come on, walk back up. Walk back up quickly. I mean, there's always, like, potentially going through the windows. But I don't trust it. I'm going to have to go. I think we're losing our window. That did not two in one. Four was not as close to that car as I thought. We may just be down a challenge here. 
Okay, one is one is most of the way up the stairs. We got the running, and I think it was to our advantage. This sucks, though. All right, I'm gonna fire and immediately hold right. Nope. Doesn't kick in fast enough. So maybe the two-in-one is something you get by hitting the truck when number seven is close enough to it. But it's also possible that the only way to really approach this is by taking the upstairs area first and using number one as like a, um, like I say, using number one as a bridge, but the other way around. Let's, let's wait for seven to rotate back around here. I guess one kind of runs up those last steps anyway. He might not have been running from all the noise we're making. It is a little unclear to me what, what really sets them in motion. And unfortunately, it seems like it's going to be pretty important when we're trying to do these more difficult shots, like being able to make sure people are going to be in a particular position or running away from a particular position. Seems important. There's your two and one. Uh, can I hit three through the fire? Because I think I have a better shot from four to one. Ooh. You sure don't. Like it's hard to hard to overstate the amount of don't. Alright. <laughs> Perfectly normal and good way to do that. Donk, this dude was just watching exactly what was happening. Um shot from him to one is going to be the easiest. So because you get the distance value multiplied by your current combo multiplier, what you really want to be doing is if you have to pick up a couple that are close together because there's no way to weave more distance between them, you want to like shoot into the shoot into the uh, the watchtower pick up like the three that are just sitting around right shoot down out of the window to somebody who's further away then to somebody who's further away then back up to somebody who's further away you want to weave all of the long parts at the end of your combo let's um let's just give let's just let's just maybe like take a peek at this here oh i have a i have a put my mask on button yeah, like, what if we did? What if we did start it up here? And I think I want to do this when one's down at the bottom, because we want to, we do want to, like, we do want to leave the area, or leave, leave the upper area, and then have a, have a nice long distance to shoot over. All right, let's turn around, snap back. Uh, we're not getting moving target bonuses here, which is a shame. I probably should have taken the, the sitting guy last. That's not very smart. Yeah. Yeah, the sitting guy is... The sitting guy is important to, to not hit last. I thought for a second there I was going to hit the door frame. It's like snap together couple of quick ones just to get your combo multiplier going. And then, yeah, put the distance on. Oh shoot, number one got back up the stairs. Oh, that's not very good for us. I mean, it counts. Was it better? Is that, I don't even remember what my other score was. <laughs> Why even bother optimizing if you're not gonna notice whether it's better? This is what she's asking herself. You can see it. Oh, she's. 
Anyway, to the occupied village. Sure are a lot of these fellas. I mean, like, the, the diegetic reality of the thing that's happening here, I guess, is, is really beyond question, right? Because we saw those other members of the cult, like, forensically trying to understand what's going on. Yeah, okay, it's just like this. Listen, sometimes... Uh, sometimes you need superpowers to kill all the people you would like to kill, and sometimes, in those situations, you even get those powers. Okay, I was kind of hoping we'd be able to... We're going to be doing some distance work here. So we have the car. The car is one thing. The car might be everything. So we know that guy. But that's really the only person we saw in the opening scene there. And it looks like it's about all we have to work with. And it's really hard to tell, like, what the sightline from this car to that truck is. Like, where is this building? You know, the depth is not. There's another vehicle over here. Let me, um... Let me see if we can mark this gas tank as well. Hmm, not quite. All right, well... I kind of want to, they obviously want you to start things at the floating car, but I am just going to be a little difficult here and let's see what's, let's see what's cracking over in this direction. Ooh, this does give you some vision. I know all this, like, spending time looking around is not good for my combo multiplier, but this is a reconnaissance assassination. We're just gonna, we're gonna assassinate them a little bit now so that we can come back and assassinate them more effectively later. Right, I cannot turn the bullet enough to get it back toward anything else. Yeah, it kind of looks like I'm uh, out of luck here. That felt like a cool way to end it at least. All right, so we found two more people. Hold on, is that... Indeed. There's one unaccounted for. I can kind of see a light over here, but I think it's just light. Well, it's a car in any case. Yeah, alright, let's, um... Let's start with the shot to the person in, inside, because... You know, we don't know when we're going to have that angle again. Plus, going under the axe handle is, is pretty neat. Aha! There's number six. And we've left open... Some okay angles here. Can't hit that but we can arc around to here and then we know this has a clean shot to the last one. And we sort of drew a four, kind of. Was there a, what is, what is the capture path button do? Okay, it just takes a screenshot of here. I mean, that's cool, I guess. Uh, I'll tell you what, I, this is not going to be a very long series, but let's go ahead and call uh, call this first episode here. This is the this is the vibe. This is the thing we're doing here in Children of the Sun. There's going to be another, you know, couple of these maybe, um, and we'll 
we'll get back to Islands of Insight. I wanted to uh, to insert a little break here while I'm playing more toward the end of that game to see if it has any more surprises for us. And I was like, you know, in order to not like jar people too much, what I should do is I should just put another puzzle game in there. Similar, you know, sort of vibe, right? So that's so that's how we got here. Uh, that's gonna be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and you know, just for sticking with me. When you come back next time, there is hunting yet to do, and we'll see you then.